Welcome back to Oakhaven. Spring has sprung. It's, uh, it's amazing to me how quickly spring comes on. Uh, if you look over the forest floor, there are things here that just weren't even a sparkle in their mother's eye when we did the last video. Um, if you look over this area here, you can see the trout lily that we talked about last time, the white trout lily. The, they're starting to, the flowers are gone, they're starting to set seed. Here's the trout lily with the trout lily like leaves. Trout, the trout skinned like leaves. Uh, just look at the density of, of plant matter on the ground here. It's really pretty amazing. We're gonna find some new wildflowers this time. And again, here's, a, here's the cut leaf toothwort that we talked about last time. It's starting to look a little spent. Here we have smooth rock cress, which is another mustard. The, um, we talked about some mustards last time. The cut leaf toothwort is a mustard. Not very dramatic flower, but it looks kind of interesting as it's coming up in the ground here. The uh, may apples are starting to come up. You can tell we've had a rain. The may apple umbrellas are covered with droplets. So may apples, you can see the ones that have two leaves will have a flower and then set fruit in the middle of it. So you can see the bud of the fruit there. There's a lot of may apples that will just have the one leaf coming up. That doesn't have the, the flower. This is wild ginger. Wild ginger is not the same ginger that we would have in our, our kitchens, but it's uh, it's related. Um, if you look at these these big bold leaves and at the base of them it has this flower that lays on the ground it never really shows itself this is just the bud but it will it will um, open up into a, a purple flower we'll talk more about that as it opens up more but just as you can recognize it and the on the forest floor and this is woodland phlox pretty purple color the petals have that that cut out of it. it looks almost like each petal is heart-shaped that's woodland phlox that's getting to be a very popular garden flower but this is a, the native um, the native version of it as the flowers are spent on the cut leaf toothwort and the seed pods are starting to form you see this very typical um, mustard seed pod where it's just a long cylindrical seed pod forming uh, all of them pointing upward it looks like uh, a lot of mustards will have that same look, uh, particularly uh, garlic mustard, as we're looking for garlic mustard later on in the season. Again, whenever we pass by honeysuckle, pull it up by the roots. This is the Amur honeysuckle. Opposite leaves, the, the um, leaf comes to a point very invasive we've worked very hard to get rid of it in here this used to be just a solid mass of honeysuckle you couldn't even see through we've gotten most of that under control now we just need to keep um, weeding out these small ones this is rue anemone rue anemone very delicate flower usually has these three flowers coming from the same point on three long stalks. Sometimes only you know, like the middle one will come up first and you won't see them the side two until later on. The leaves are very round lobed. It's rue anemone. So we really are going to focus on wildflowers but as I'm walking by I'm seeing this which is a euonymus. It's a winter creeper, very invasive. Some of you may have it in your yards as a, a ground cover. Uh, it's a very effective ground cover, but very invasive if it gets out into the woods. Uh, so we try to pull that whenever we see it. So we're dog sitting for the weekend. So if you see this new beauty walking in and out of the frame, this is Dash. So this 
violet. This is called um, smooth violet. Pretty yellow violet. Unlike the purple violets that we get in our lawn, which have a, a rosette of leaves at the bottom and then a stalk that comes up, this actually has a, a stalk that has branching with uh, so it's a stalk and then branches off, so it's a little different, but uh, very delicate little flower. As you scan over the woods, there's just a huge patch of, of the wild leeks or ramps here. I think it looks prettier after a rain when the, the leaves are dappled with water droplets. So here we have that purple violet I was talking about. So if you unbury it, you can see that the flowering stalk and all the leaves come from one point in the base. It doesn't have that, that, uh, that branching that the yellow violet has. This is just the uh, common violet. Uh, this is the same species that you'll have in your lawn and uh, garden beds, and it grows in the woods. Pretty flower, though. Here's the yark larkspur. So we have several patches of larkspur that we're trying to find. I've got them marked with these yellow-green flags. And they're just starting to come out and bud. This one's out a little further. You can see that spur that gives the lark spur its name here. Coming out of the back, looks like a rhinoceros horn coming out of the back of the flower. That's lark spur. Not all that rare of plant, but we only have this one small patch of it. So I managed to pick up this winter creeper and I'm carrying it with me because I don't want to throw it down on the ground because as you can see it's full of roots and it will just reroot and uh, and take over which isn't what I want to do so I'm going to bag it up and I'm going to take it back to the, uh, the house and throw it out in the trash. Um, you'll notice that when I pick up honeysuckle I throw it down on the ground with the roots up in the air so that they can dry out and that's usually pretty effective in, in killing the, uh, um, the, the little baby honeysuckles. Um, this, this is a euonymus. Um, this is also a euonymus. This is burning bush, and it's really hard to pull because it has, again, very fibrous roots. But that's burning bush or winged euonymus. Again, something that you, you often see in landscaping. We've got a whole video on the fact that I don't really like it, to use it in uh, landscaping because it is so invasive when it gets out into the, um, the woodlands. Here's another one here. So, the leaves are pointed. That, I'm confident, will dry up and die, so I'm going to just lay that down on the ground. So any of you that watched the, our winter tree identification, you can see this, this is box elder, which I said at the time could be recognized in the winter because of the green twigs, the opposite branching in the green twigs. But you can see now the uh, the leaves are coming out and you can see that it's a compound leaf. I said it was the only compound leafed um, maple tree that we have. So there's the, the compound leaves coming up. They have three leaflets when they're small and then they'll get five as they get older. Um, that's box elder. In our last video, we talked about purple cress as being one of the, the mustards. Uh, this is starting to lose its petals, but you can still see that, cre that, uh, that mustard-like seed pod that we were just talking about with the um, cutleaf toothwort, a uh, long cylinder pointing upward. So as we come on, you can see one over here, and this is in the path. I'm going to go ahead and just pick it. 
it's lost all its petals, but you can look at that and just, just from the, the seed pods, those long uh, siliques, the mustard family uh, seed pod there, you can recognize uh, at least what family it's in, and then you could look at the leaves and recognize that as purple cress. So this, I mentioned that this was burning bush, or winged euonymus. If you look at the the stem there, it shows you what winged euonymus, what the wings look like on winged euonymus. I mentioned at the end of our last wildflower video, wildflowers number one, that, uh, that uh, Dutchman's Breaches was just starting to, to open up. And I said I would talk more about it later. So here it is. And you can see this whole patch, and you can see those those pantaloons, or those breeches, those pants there, hanging upside down off the clothesline. Very pretty plant. Dutchman's breeches. It's also called uh, blue staggers. I've never heard anyone call it blue staggers, but that's what, uh, um, you know, on the internet they talk about it being blue staggers, because... There's a, a compound in here that will get cows kind of tipsy, like drunk. So uh, it's like a narcotic in here. So if cows get into this and will eat too much of it, you'll see them staggering around, which gives it the common name blue staggers. Uh, we don't have cattle, so I've never experienced that before. And Kimber doesn't seem to want to eat it. So that's uh, blue staggers or Dutchman's breeches. I just can't emphasize enough how dense the forest floor is covered with, with uh, uh, greenery right now. As you look around, you can see that there's a lot of these honeysuckle carcasses. So this used to be just covered with honeysuckle. It was pretty dense in here. And hardly anything grows underneath honeysuckle. Honeysuckle uh, inhibits the growth of the native uh, wildflowers. So if you look at this, look how green and lush this is. This is just... Um, a, a breath of relief for these these wildflowers to get all of this honeysuckle out of here. I'll show you this. Um, this is the Japanese honeysuckle. And it's a vine, so it grows along the ground here. And some people don't recognize the Japanese honeysuckle when it first opens up because it has this kind of dissected leaf. Here, I'll do it over here where it's almost, um, almost toothed. And when it gets bigger, it has more of the rounder leaves. But when it first comes up, it has those toothed leaves. Um, that's Japanese honeysuckle, which again is a, an invasive that we're trying to get rid of. It, uh, it tends to grow up in and, and smother uh, shrubs and trees and things like that. Here it is growing, and you can see it's coming up kind of vine-like, so you recognize it looks like a vine. And you can see those toothed leaves, and then the smooth leaves. That's the same plant, that's Japanese honeysuckle. I'm gonna try to pull that out. Here we have a whole patch of the spring beauty. They've all closed up for the day. I guess they do. that's what they do. Spring beauty has a bulb that you can actually eat. It's pretty tiny, I would say it's like the size of a pea, so you could dig this up and it might take you, you know, half an hour of digging up all of these these spring beauties to to get enough to eat. Um, I'd rather just look at them rather than eat the spring beauty bulbs. But they are edible. This is small flowered buttercup. As you can see, it is a pretty small flower there. It has very interesting leaves because down at the base, you'll see round to heart-shaped leaves. And then the next layer up will be like if you took those rounder leaves and made them into three lobes. And then along the stem, you'll have these long, thin leaves. So it's basically got three different kinds of leaves. We talked about this one because... I think it looks a little like lesser celandine. So our lesser celandine video, we talked about uh, trying to recognize the difference between uh, lesser celandine and small flowered buttercup when it's just very young at this stage, uh, when we're trying to treat it when the other plants aren't up. 
I love the way this looks. This is great leafed water leaf. And uh, water leaf because it looks like it has water spots on the leaves. It looks just so great when it first comes out fresh like this. As these leaves get bigger, it's going to lose some of that mottling and it'll look more green. We'll look at it again later because it also will get a, a flower on there that we'll talk about uh, on, a, on a future video. But that's water leaf, great leafed water leaf. This is different from Virginia water leaf. Uh, Virginia water leaf has a, uh, the stem here of the, the leaf doesn't have this uh, hairiness to it. So we'll finish up with two native trees that are blooming right now. Does that count as wildflowers? I'm going to say that counts as wildflowers. It's wild. It has a flower on it. So this is red bud. Uh, red bud has this amazing flower that just seems to burst out of the, the bark all over the, the trunk and up on the stems. It just looks like, I don't know, like it didn't know where to bloom and it just was, it's so full of bloom that it's just breaking out of the bark. That's red bud. And then the other one that we have blooming right now is uh, flowering dogwood, which I'll walk over here and we can look at this. So this is a little dogwood, flowering dogwood. You can see it's starting to open up. The buds, the bud scales are opening and growing into these bracts that will encompass these uh, these flower buds that will turn into yellow flowers. These bracts will turn bright white into the flowers that you're used to. That, that'll be a, a little teaser for the next video that will show when these buds have opened up or these flowers have opened up more. Uh, you'll see that next time. So uh, we appreciate you coming along. If you like this video, hit the like button. We always appreciate new subscribers. Uh, other than that, thanks for coming along.